Welcome to our show titled Successful Refugees and Immigrants Leading the Way, part 13 of a multi-part series, Joseph Pulitzer, father of the modern American newspaper. For various reasons throughout history, people have been forced to leave their homelands and find refuge in other countries, thus allowing them to rebuild their lives and reclaim their dignity. Others have voluntarily migrated to other nations simply for better educational or economic opportunities. There are countless stories of those overcoming many adversities and succeeding in enhancing their new surroundings with their immense skills and talents. Many have made notable contributions to their adopted countries in the fields of art, economics, education, science, sports, etc. In this series, Successful Refugees and Immigrants Leading the Way, we will profile prominent individuals who have enriched the nations to which they have arrived and contributed to the greater good of our world. Joseph Blitzer's life could only be described as dramatic. From riches to poverty to riches again, this young Hungarian Jewish immigrant eventually became a United States congressman, the owner of the largest newspaper in the world, the embodiment of American journalism and the founder of the Pulitzer Prize. His beliefs and his work helped to shape the ideas, spirit and political landscape of the United States during his era. Born into a wealthy family in Hungary, Young Joseph had private tutors and learned both French and German. When he was 11 years old, his father died and the family went bankrupt. Joseph became determined to become a soldier. The United States had an internal conflict at the time and a recruiter in Europe convinced him to come and enlist. Young Joseph spoke almost no English but found a German-speaking cavalry unit to join. When the war ended eight months later, Joseph tried many odd jobs. He became homeless. Desperate, he traveled by boxcar to St. Louis, Missouri, where there was a large German-speaking population. He later said, The light of St. Louis looked like a promised land to me. The city was truly without class distinctions. While working as a waiter, Joseph was able to meet some of the most influential men in the city, at the library and while playing chess. He was soon offered a job as a reporter at a German-language newspaper. While covering a local political party meeting, the delegates thought it would be a joke to nominate young Joseph to run for the state legislature, as the party had almost no chance of winning in the region. Pulitzer took it seriously and ran a real campaign. The 22-year-old immigrant with a heavy Hungarian accent won. Just five years after arriving in the USA, he was on his way to the Missouri state capitol to help write and create laws. Joseph was a workaholic. It was said that if he entered the revolving door behind you, he would somehow emerge in front of you. He bought a local English newspaper and then a German language newspaper, later selling the latter for 20,000 US dollars. Then he acquired another paper and later combined it with his first one to create the St. Louis Post-Dispatch. The paper was successful under his management and circulation continually climbed. Pulitzer had an almost religious belief in democracy and the role journalism played in it. He once stated, There is only one way to get a democracy on its feet, and that is by keeping the public informed. In 1883, Pulitzer moved his family to New York City and bought a newspaper called The New York World. He immediately began reworking the money-losing paper. He created a better layout that was easier to read with short and snappy headlines. In the early 1890s, the technology advanced enough that he could add color to many sections, especially for comics and illustrations. The cartoons were one of the keys to his success, shining a light on corruption and illustrating the realities of life in the city. He kept his populist point of view, running stories that focused on the common people. Pulitzer wrote, Always fight for progress and reform. Never tolerate injustice or corruption. Always oppose privileged classes and public plunder. Never lack sympathy for the poor. Never be afraid to attack wrong. Always be drastically independent. 
We will now pause a moment for a constructive message and then return. Please stay tuned to Supreme Master Television. Welcome back to Successful Refugees and Immigrants Leading the Way, part 13 of a multi-part series, Joseph Pulitzer, father of the modern American newspaper, on Supreme Master Television. Just 10 days after buying the New York World, a perfect opportunity to establish the newspaper as the champion of the poor and working class appeared. The Brooklyn Bridge opened, connecting Brooklyn and Manhattan. Government officials created a one-penny toll for pedestrians to cross the bridge. Pulitzer put an enormous image of the Brooklyn Bridge on the front page of his paper with a demand for free crossing. He wrote, Let the bridge be free. A penny is a workman's lunch. The working classes of the city do not enjoy many privileges. Let them at least have free schools, free air, free daylight, and a free bridge. In 1884, Pulitzer was elected to the United States House of Representatives. He soon realized that his true passion and the best way to serve the nation was through his newspaper. He quit Congress after one year and returned to the New York world. Natural disasters, crimes and scandals all helped to sell papers. But investigative journalism and uncovering fraud and deceit were the foundation of the New York world. In 1887, he hired one of the world's most famous investigative journalists, Nellie Bly. Her first assignment was to have herself committed to an insane asylum in New York City. She stayed for one week before Pulitzer had her released. She wrote articles that exposed the terrible conditions at the asylum. The result was the city government dedicated funds to clean up and improve the conditions there. Nellie Bly went on to expose sweatshops, jails and corrupt lobbyists. She was one of the most famous reporters of her time. In addition to reporting the news, Pulitzer also wanted the newspaper to be a sort of handbook for immigrants arriving in New York City. He knew they needed help understanding this new nation and a culture that could seem so strange. Many had never experienced democracy or understood the concept of voting. He gave them information on where to take English lessons and guides to the latest fashions, often with an actual dress pattern included in the paper. All of his instincts paid off. When he bought the New York World, it was selling 15,300 papers a day and losing 40,000 US dollars a year. He then made it the most successful paper in the entire country and possibly in the whole world. In 1898, the circulation would rise to over 1 million copies per day. Sadly, Joseph Pulitzer began to lose his vision and eventually went blind. He spent time traveling around Europe trying to find a cure and eventually took to living at times on his boat. He ran the paper by telegram and memorandum, making sure it met his journalistic standards. When he passed away in 1911, he made provisions in his will that would ensure that his journalistic legacy would carry on far into the future. First, he left an endowment to Columbia University to create a school of journalism. It had been his dream that journalists would have formal training in the same way as other professions and that the school would cement integrity and a dedication to reporting the facts among reporters. In his will, he also left money to create the award with which his name is most associated, the Pulitzer Prize. The Pulitzer Prize is awarded every year to recognize the most outstanding examples of journalism, including the fields of investigative reporting and public service. The arts are also honored with awards given to writers in the areas of fiction, poetry, drama and others. Joseph Pulitzer's most enduring legacy is to have made Americans a nation of newspaper readers. He created the aspect of the American spirit that believes in staying informed by reading the news every day. If you would like to learn more about Joseph Pulitzer, you can read the biography Pulitzer, A Life in Politics, Print and Power by James McGrath Morris. 
or watch the Public Broadcasting Service or PBS documentary Joseph Pulitzer, Voice of the People. To learn more about the Pulitzer Prize, please visit the following website, pulitzer.org. Bright viewers, it has been a pleasure to have you with us today for our programme. 